Hi there, guys. Um, so, um, to welcome to the pick band session between um, Team Johnny, um, uh, led by Battle Dog, and uh, Rep Cartel Mark II, uh, led by Solomon Chosa, uh, famous Alliance Tournament team captain for the Tuskers. Um, so, well, yeah, we're getting you straight, straight in, stuck straight in here. Um, so, Team Johnny on the red side. Yeah, Team Johnny been doing pretty well so far. They beat Volta earlier, so they're in the running to be the in the top. A rep card tell mark two, I believe they've done okay. They've lost one and won one. Yeah, so Team Johnny ahead of uh, uh, Rep Cartel here uh, in the standings. Uh, they're opening. They see. They've seen what the Hyperion managed to pull off in the last match, and they're making sure that um, that does not happen to them. So they're banning out Hyperion. A uh, rep cartel responding with Vigil now. Um, I trying to remember now. I'm just looking at my uh, statistics rather, and uh, we've seen. Um, Vigil not actually banned yet, but used heavily. So an interesting ban there from Rep Cartel. They're identifying the um, Vigil as a very, very strong ship. They know that um, Red Team gets a pick frigate first, so they're removing vig that Vigil option. Um, and so, it's, so it's interesting that teams are starting to pick up on the support ships being as crucial as the uh, support, you know, the support frigates being as crucial, certain ones anyway, um, as the cruisers or battleships. Um, so APOC banned out for Team Johnny, pretty solid ban from them, I think. Um, sure, Rep Cartel can't take it. It's kind of an interesting ban because they are going to force team jo the red team into shield as, as normal with the Ogre ban. They'll get the extra. It's kind of interesting not to ban the Raven or the Tempest, though. They only have one ban left, so uh, Team Johnny will get either the Raven or the Tempest, whatever one they decide to pick up. And with picking up the Merlin, uh, this the Merlin has two medium shield extenders, so it's really tanky. It actually works really well with the Logi, and they're going to get their hands on either the Osprey or the Scythe. Yeah, Merlin is pretty solid pick because it's probably it's probably second in popularity to the Vigil for the kind of like the shield support role because um, it's got a decent amount of. Um, uh, uh, buffer and it's got a decent amount of DPS as well, blasters and Tristan and Algos there, um, kind of a typical drone rep bot um, set up here coming from Sully's team. Um, so they'll be using lots of drones with probably rep bots, I imagine, um, to keep their logistics alive. Yeah, we see the tower picked up by Team Johnny. Tower's a pretty solid choice. I think it's probably the second most picked destroyer outside of the Algos. Yeah, definitely. Um, tower's been um picked a total of eight times so far and it's got a 75 percent win rate um rep cartel they're going for the execra with its very low win rate um but they've got confidence in it um it kind of worked it almost worked for them they kind of did almost beat volta um but um we'll see there if the logibot kind of setup that they brought in their first match last time will work as well uh, in this match team johnny bring the off oh, Spray. So interesting here. They've gone for our spray over the um, side. So um, side has been very popular with the kind of like fast moving setups. Uh, teams that want to kind of try and outpilot the other teams. Osprey a little bit tankier. So I'm thinking we maybe we we'll see a rock here. Uh, a rogue from Team Johnny. Uh, Rep Cartel banning out the Raven, uh, making sure Team Johnny can't run away and spam cruise missiles at them. Yeah, and Team Johnny uh, picking up, uh, banning the Oracle, the most popular battle cruiser, just because it has such huge DPS and uh, optimal range. Uh, the Tempest is also available for them for the red team. I think the Rogue and the Tempest, both two solid options available. And Myrmidon picked by Silly's team Rep Cartel. That's interesting. I don't think we, I think we've seen one other Myrmidon and it hasn't done very well. Lots of drones coming out here in Rep as hell. Possibly Logibots bots from the Myrmidon as well. Maybe they're just going for like loads of rep bots just to kind of like make sure that Zekra just does not die, possibly. Um, yeah, interesting pick here. I would have expected Harbringer with its really good medium pulse lasers. Um, Team Johnny going for a Drake here. I think they're going to go for a Rock as well. They're going for like a really tanky, brawly shield setup, which I love to see. Um, oh no, sorry, forgive me. They're going for the Tempest, uh, which is a bit more kind of an all round ship. Hand hand kind of kite a little bit with Barrage, um, but also it's got an XL ASB, so it's kind of probably the best all round battleship. Yeah, it also has that smart bomb, which might be key in this matchup with the uh, Myrmidon, Algus, and Tristan on the field. That possibly that's what probably they game change. Possibly they change the game plan. I'm seeing that Myrmidon pick coming in there, uh, making sure they got a smart bomb to because um, if he charges straight in and he manages to get on top of the Zekra and it hits his large smart bomb, um, after a few cycles, it's going to probably clear all the rep bots. 
um, on the Execra and, and able to kill it. Um, Dominic's here going for full, almost full drone setup here coming from Rep Cartel. I'm quite surprised that Sully's gone for this. Um, and I'm really excited to see how this is going to work. Yeah, I believe we saw something very similar flown by Team Footwork, except with the Armageddon replaced for Dominic's and it didn't do very well. Rather crucially, Team Footwork had a Vexor instead of the Execra, so that meant they had very limited amount of tanks they had to use. They had to they had to go in all in on the DPS. Um, whereas Requital here with the Execra, they've got potential to have a very tanky setup um, if they use Logibots from all of their support ships. Um, potentially a lot of reps there, they could just kind of wall up uh, and then stick sentries out with the Dominics and possibly the Myrmidon to try and snipe things down, possibly. Um, but the Drake and the Tempest, I think, I think might be able to outplay them. We'll see. Uh, we'll see what um, April thinks of these setups. Well, certainly very interesting setups. We have, as you mentioned, the drone spam from Rep Cartel. Super excited to see that team cover through full on Galente drone action. The best rates in EVE Online, if we're honest, are the Galente going up against a whole mix with the Merlin, Tower, Osprey, Drake, Tempest team. Lovely and brawly. I do like to see that. However, my thoughts are not the interesting ones. You guys want to hear from the commentators. Rain and Madam, what are your thoughts on these setups coming for us here? Both uh, setups that we haven't really seen much of yet. Well, I'm, I'm pretty excited to see. Uh, obviously, you've got a ton of drones uh, from Rip Cartel, and you got a lot of Glente. So it's always nice to be on the same page. You know, they're going to have basically everything you're going to see is going to be drone on Tempest and Drake and Osprey conflicts. And that's always fun when you get all like giant group of things coming right at you um and also there's a drake on the field and i just i wanted to restate how awesome it is to see a drake uh, everywhere in eve i'm really right, excited because right. i mean it's kind of like the shield setup versus the uh, armor setup so i'm really excited to see because i mean these are i don't want to call it a mirror matchup but it's kind of a mirror matchup so i'm always really excited to see these it'll be really inter interesting to see how like the tristan algos Myrmidon, and dami do with their drones, um, so there's obviously the lot of speculation of using rut bots, which makes sense. But I'm wondering if they're going to actually use maybe some sort of sneaky EWAR bots, or um, just try and do use it for a DPS, because obviously, especially with like the Myrmidon, that's where like their DPS comes from. They want to be able to actually be able to kill the enemy team. I also want to point out, uh, Kellen Darklight in Twitch chat mentioned this. Drake has a hundred percent win rate, I believe, and. Uh... That's that's clearly because it is in fact one of the if not the best ship in Eve. So that's very exciting to see a Drake hundred percent win rate. Probably Johnny's going to win this just by default of having a Drake on the field. I mean, uh, the Drake fever runs strong in the Eve NT tournament. I'm sure should do somewhere in Australia. Is smiling to himself about the Drake making a return. Uh, we've got a great match coming up for you between Team Johnny and the Rep Cartel. Super excited to see who wins here. We've got the teams fitting up their ships at the moment. We've got a few minutes before they're finished, before we teleport them into the arena and are ready to get underway. Um, but hopefully, if uh, I've been poked correctly, we may have the winners to the giveaway. Or did I say that would be after this match? Uh, I guess you can announce them now if you want. Yeah, you awesome. can do it now, man. So, Tony, do you want to do it? Oh uh, yeah, sure. The winner is Hagbards, whose in-game name is also Hagbards, and um, uh, the skin will get, I guess, contracted to you or sent to you by CCP. I'm not entirely sure the how it works. The skins for all the prizes that we're giving away will be uh, given out as soon as we receive them from CCP. Uh, we expect them before the end of December, so uh, it'll be at the end of uh, the tournament, uh, but before the end of the year. Okay, cool. So uh, Hagbard will get his skin then uh, as a Christmas present. Awesome. <laughs> yep. Christmas event being handed out. I hope all you guys are wearing your Christmas jumpers all snugly and warm. It is freezing in my flat at the moment, but uh, I'm making best do. Uh, let me ask you guys, uh, Mr. Madden, who do you think is going to win this match? Oh, I think, I think Johnny's going to win. I mean, they've brought. I mean, I love the Osprey. I like the tour, uh, the the Tempest Drake combination. Um, you know, drones are strong, but drones are also smart bombed away, and missiles can also blow up drones. And once the drones are dead, they're a lot less fun. Um, so I'm excited to see a Drake win a match. Awesome. What about you, Rain? Same. I always cheer for the Shield team, so I'm cheering for Team Johnny. 
or as it's shown on the uh, band tool, a jaw honey, because there's two H's. Bay the Bay Art J? I'm really not sure who's going to win this. Um, you know, Sully's got a brilliant set of pilots there. Um, whereas I, I think Team Johnny's got the stronger pick. I mean, it, 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 the drone, the all drone setups definitely says I've got a secret play here that you guys haven't thought of. So uh, hopefully Tully has done that, and it's going to be really interesting. Awesome. What about you, Satania? Well, the uh, all drone team, but there's a smart bomb on the Tempest, so we'll, I think it's going to come down to that. I'm not a big fan of the Myrmidon. I definitely think the Drake is much cooler. Drake is also a cool. Uh, a magi- a musician, if you want to get back with your ex to listen to, so... Well, uh, looks like one of the teams is having a little piloting issue, so it's just going to be another minute or two before we get this match started. Um, I know he didn't want to talk that much tonight, but I do want to very briefly bring on Mr. Nash Cadaver, who's paying attention. How have mm-hmm. you felt that this second season of EventT has gone, given all the rule changes, given uh, the major minor league stuff going on? How happy are you with how everything's turned out so far? Uh, I think I think we should all be uh, very pleased with how it's turned out. I think there was a lot of uh, potentially perceived negativity about uh, going with fixed fittings, which uh, obviously the captains were very much against because they like the freedom of being able to fit their own ships. But uh, I think they've all grown to love this new format in terms of uh, changing the tactics, not to be just based on piloting and fitting. Um, it's uh, it's you know also the the banning section, which is, uh, you know, complicated and requires uh, tactics from, from uh, you know, both teams, no matter what side you're on. There's a very different banning strategy, whether you're uh, red or blue. And I think uh, they're starting to figure it out and appreciate it. And I think um, also the viewers are starting to get it and starting to see, uh, you know, the, the value of it and, and the fact that it's easier to understand in terms of uh, what you're going to be watching. It's not just... Uh, you know, a Drake which could be fit, you know, 20 million different ways. It's, you know, the Drake as you know in this tournament, um, which which is a very uh, interesting aspect. I would obviously love more viewers, but uh, other than that, I think I'm, uh, I'm very pleased. Awesome. Uh, we have had an issue where apparently one of the Tuskers pilots from Rep Cartel uh, have not been teleported into the arena, uh, which is evidently something going wrong with our tool. So we are going to have to wait for that to be sorted. Yep, it's, uh, uh, it's B-Dog. He, he had one of the characters in his team who uh, disconnected. So we're uh, pulling him back in and we'll get him moved as soon as we can. Uh, I'm with you. Okay. Um, so... Uh, if it's possible, can we go to an ad break or something, or do we not have those? Okay, well, we're, know, not, we're not going to make equal do that. That's that's apparently a thing that would break everything. We don't want to break everything. So um, let's talk a little bit more about the setup for this, matches, this match. Sorry, Suetonia, what is your favorite ship in terms of the fit and its utility in the EVENT tournament? Uh, that's a re- really tough one. I don't know. I'm a big fan of the, of the Oracle. I love just doing... Raw DPS with just high speed, uh, decent tracking, just as much DPS as possible, as well as really good flexible range, and that's what the Oracle represents. I know it's not that very, it's not as interesting as the Drake, but I think the Oracle definitely is like my favorite one. Awesome. Uh, how about you, Madden? Yeah, I mean, um... and I just see that both teams are actually about to warp to the range. Uh, yeah, I, I think I agree with Sajonia. I think he's right. I actually agree. Awesome. Do we have any differing opinions? Rain, what's your favorite ship? Oh, no. So, like, I don't know. I always, like, like in this match, I would say my Tristan's the favorite because I fly the Tristan, but these fits, God, I don't actually know. I think the Osprey's really good for a Lodgy ship and then the Executor, which we both see here. They're both pretty strong. Um, I'd obviously pick the Osprey because I'm a Shield fan. Uh, who I missed out. Mr. Art J, you're the man who came up with the fits for these. Do you have a personal favorite? Um, I'm not sure I have a, a one favorite ship. Um, in this match, it's probably the Tempest, just because I love how 
it's got a lot of flexibility and it's kind of an all-round good ship um and also i love the model um clear skies you know um and all that so um you know it's got odd cannons it's got damage in select damage it this damage can't be muted it's got an xlas beast it's got local tank of its logi dies it's just great it's just great also it's got you know a neutralizer and a smart bomb rather in the high slots um so it's great great all-round ship and i um we've seen it do some really cool things so i hope we can see them do really cool things again all right well before we go to the match a big shout out to my boys in blue currently taking down the keep star in m taco against the evil forces of circle of test the test co uh whatever you want to call them i have on one of my monitors uh the stream of that going on from Deopa. uh looks like a tight eye slug fest but certainly an interesting one to be watching on the side whilst putting 99% of your attention on this amazing tournament. Let's head over to the casters for this match. Uh, it's going to be, once again, Rain and Madden. All right, Madden here with Rain for this match of Tuskers versus Johnny. Very excited to see what they've got today. I'll introduce Tuskers with their Dami, Mervinon, Execure, Algos, Tristan, Group of Drones of Doom. Rain, you yep. want to introduce Johnny? Yeah, so Johnny brought the Tempest, the Drake, which everyone loves, the Osprey, the Tower, and the Merlin. And they all worked in at... Well, so the Drake and the Tempest warped in at 10 kilometers, and then the rest of the team warped in at 30. Yeah, they're basically about as far apart as they can get, with the exception of the Drake and the Tempest being right next to each other. As we get started, seeing where they're going. Yep, and so the match has started. Now we get to see the moment of truth of what drones that they decided to bring, or that Tusker, or Mark... Me oh. Oh my gosh. Repertel <laughs> Mark II, if I can speak, yeah. We can see what drones that they brought. I don't understand why they're why, why um, Tuskers is shooting the Tempest. Maybe just to kind of like see what happens. Although they're doing a ton of damage. They but brought I, 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 sentry drones. Yeah, they did. And then the armor bots. Yeah, so so we were right there. Everyone was predicting the armor maintenance bots. I mean, I'm, I'm, armor maintenance bots, I'm glad they did it, because I think that's, an, like, a necessity. Sentries is a good choice, though, I think, maybe. Just kind of, like, keeping people on their toes. Could have caught the Tempest off guard. I don't think it's necessarily worked, but they can kind of leave those behind. Probably coming out of either the Myrmidon or the Dami, who has multiple bays of drones to spare. Because I, I think, I, as the match goes on, those curators will probably not hit as well. Because now you're seeing that Tristan take a ton of damage instantly. Well, the Exeter is also taking some damage on the side. Yeah, so the Executor is actually repping both the um, the Algos and the Tristan, as well as having rep bots on himself to kind of keep, you know, what little buffer he has going. Well, I hope he's not repping the Algos. It's not taking any damage. That'd be a weird choice. Well, it showed it on the uh, the fancy UI, so maybe that's broken a little bit. Or no, more likely he just accidentally put it on, or he put it on just in case, because he wasn't sure who's going to get shot at. Because yeah. when you have as much damage as you got from the Tempest and the Drake and everybody, you know, especially it's like with the Caracal matchup, you can see a ship die like that. But clearly, you know, the Tristan's taking a lot of damage, but not enough to, to make a difference until there's tackle and every, I mean, more tackle and everybody right on top of him, maybe, you know, see how this Tempest plays out. But he, he's taking a good amount of damage. The Osprey's having to work hard. Yeah, and I mean, I think it kind of shows, so like, I mean, obviously, when you have armor reps, they rep at the end of the cycle, so he could have been preemptively repping that Algos. Yeah, well, I, no, think, it's I think that's take damage. Going on. Although this now you're seeing the Osprey take damage, and I, I think this is a big moment, because the Executor has not been taking damage the entire fight, but because, which means he's got to have lots of pace left, he's not going to go down very quickly, even if they switch. But this Osprey has only so many cap boosters in his, in his thing, and he's run through four or five already. If he, this Osprey keeps taking damage like this, he's going to drop, and he's going to drop really fast, because he's taking a ton of DPS. Yeah, and he also, while he does have a cap booster, he does have those Dami newts on him as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I I don't know if the newts are going to make the difference here. You know, as I, I see everything dropping off of him, obviously he was he was scrammed for a moment, so that that's going to make his life real hard. But now he he's almost dead. He's probably oh, gone. Oh yeah, I yeah, think yeah. He's out of boosters. Scrammed and webbed, I believe, by this Algos on him as well. And now, wow, he's almost in structure. He's not able to keep himself up for too long. He's bleeding pretty hard. 
quite sure what yeah. happened. Like, did he just get caught out? No, and, like, the, the, the Algos instinct? went over and caught him. The Algos went over and caught him. It was just a great play from the Algos. And he, he just said, I'm, I'm, I'm going to surprise this Osprey. And he did a great job. Yeah, and another... essentially, that, that's just piloting. And, and when you do that great a job of piloting, which is what Mr. Long Drinks did. Well, um, this Executor is dropping now, too. He's also bleeding structure. So the Osprey just went down, but this Executor is shortly, yeah, right behind him. Wow. And both lives so, but... just wiped off the field. Essentially, Michael did en enough to stay alive so that uh, Johnny could come around, make sure they finished off the exit gear first, which is what they really needed to do because they weren't actually killing anything with him on the field and all those drones. And now the Algos is going to get popped immediately because he was right in the thick of it trying to keep that keep that Osprey down. And that Tristan's going to go next, um, or at the same time almost. That's going to be a ton of the DPS off the field because that Algos and Tristan are super strong. Um, this, this, this is going to hurt. This is going to hurt Tuskers a lot. Yeah, so Rep Cartel is not going to be able, like, they have no support now. It's just the Myrmidon and the Dominics against um, the rest of Team Johnny, ex excluding the Logi. But right now, they obviously have strength in numbers. Yeah, Rep Cartel, not Tuskers. My bad. Screen. Don't worry about what it says on the screen. That's Rep Cartel Mark II. It's a surprise change of names um, as the Myrmidon and Drake are taking damage. But the Drake's in armor. It's not an armor Drake, even though that is a thing, even though it shouldn't be a thing. So that, that Drake's going to die now. It's like a hawk going quick. down. Everyone was talking about Drake 100% win rate or survival rate, and now he's actually dying. So I don't know if he'll be able to keep that up. Or this is Drake devastating. Keep the stats up. I, I I mean this is this is a very scary moment because I mean for two reasons. One, Drakes are dying, and that's terrible. But also Tempest now versus Myrmidon Dominix is like that that that's not a matchup I would choose on a normal day at the office. Um, the Myrmidon's definitely gonna drop now. I, I next I think given how low in armor it is. And the Dami's, you know, Dami versus Tempest. Tempest is already taking some damage. Tower and the Merlin are going to provide some nice support and some tackling abilities. I, yeah. I, definitely, Tuskers can still win this match. It's not over. Yeah, I don't know, though. I don't know if the Dami can do everything himself. Oh, well, I mean, well, Dami's actually, they're repping right. the Myrmidon with his drones, and that's keeping him alive. And that Tempest is, is you know, he's struggling. You know, he's, he's holding for now. But oh, I, the Myrmidon? I, yeah, say the Tempest is shield, so but I, yeah, now he's down. This is I mean, a fun map. Like, I like this one. Tempest, well, you know, actually, he's he's holding his own. I mean, we've got the tower and the Merlin providing support. I mean, it's just a lot of damage for Suleiman to take out by himself. But he's sitting there, full armor, full shields. Again, not in a shield ship, so shields don't even matter to him. Yeah, actually, bonus yeah, money. I'm looking at that, which is weird because he was with on a shield rep. But I guess like his arm or his HP is spread out pretty evenly. Yeah, I mean, I, I think he's definitely going to be fully did armor tanked more than, than anything else. But definitely, like, this is this is strong. This is a strong moment for him. He can take out this Tempest, I think, before he goes down. Yeah, um, for sure. Just given where everything's going. Um, unless the Tempest can take out all of his drones, which he probably <sighs> is. Actually, there's no drones at all. It's just, just guns, right? Oh, yeah, just guns. No drones. Wow, drone match without drones. Surprise! Yeah, I'm not quite um, sure. I know... I mean, I believe they dropped sentries earlier, but I don't think they oh, actually yeah. used them. Uh, no, the sentries are what's applying. They're applying they from are? different okay. ranges. They're yeah, 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 yeah. Um, overviews are hard and stuff. This Tempest but, is now in structure, and the Dami isn't even <laughs> in armor. Like, yeah, the Dami's going to win. Damage. I, don't, I don't think the Tempest was just able to keep up with the all, all the DPS that was on the field from the Dominics. Essentially, those sentries, um, they made the difference. They worked really well. Um, you know, the Tempest is trying to rep, but I don't I don't think it's gonna be enough considering he's in he's in structure and the dummies in armor. I don't I don't think he's gonna win this. I mean the tower and the Merlin, um they have transversal. They're gonna be really, really hard to hit with sentries. Um Tower especially has range. So, you know, maybe surprise, especially as this Tempest, you know, is gonna use all of his charges to try and get keep it peak recharge and essentially survive as long as humanly possible. Um it's not like this is this is this is just a back and forth or all, all all day. I, I don't know. What what do you think's gonna who do you think who do you got right now? I don't know. So like I think if this Tempest can stay alive, I mean we have less than three minutes left, so not quite sure how well he can do staying alive. But if he does, then obviously they win. I don't know if the Dami can actually apply damage, even though he's barely taking any damage. This is but definitely it... like a staying alive theme song kind of moment. <laughs> yeah. Like uh, I I mean I saw the Tempest Instead of, like, running away and staying alive, he just, like, is repping and then just chasing down this Dominix. I mean, slowly killing the Dominix is working for them. As long as the, the curators or the bouncers, whichever they're using, um, are not hitting him as well as possible, you know, he's able to essentially rep all the way, or rep 50%, probably hit reload, hope he doesn't explode. If he could rep again, I think the Dominic dies. 
So this is this is close. This there's a real chance both sides here. Tempest is now in structure, but two minutes to go. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't know that that Suleiman versus the Talwar. Uh, the Talwar probably really really hard to hit. He better not be shooting at the Talwar. He should be shooting at this Tempest. If he kills well, no, the Tempest, I'm saying like win. if he kills the Tempest, even. Oh okay, yeah. But no, if he kills the Tempest, no, he definitely they win by points. Uh well yeah if, if uh Tal uh I think the Dami would win wouldn't it? I think so. Yeah. Well, the Tempest is repping himself again, so yeah, oh my he, god, he, he's he, actually he... staying alive and killing this Dami. Battle oh my god, good Killed fight. the Dami. With that, Great. listen to back to the studio.